What is up XRB community? Welcome back to another video. Some very bullish news in my opinion today. Um, I'm gonna talk about a really large whale movement, some big partnerships that Ripple's making, um, a stable coin on the XRP ledger, Warren Buffett and his connection to a Ripple project. Great video from Raul Paul, a I'm super successful investor talking about why he thinks the risk asset market may have bottomed out, right? A lot of people are calling for a recession, this is smart money, Raul Paul, guys like this. They know a lot more than you and me probably. And uh, really interesting video. And then something from the news, former CFTC chairman talking about the Ripple lawsuit. And then a clip from a lawyer, Fred Rispoli, talking about why the Ripple lawsuit favors Ripple and how they will win. Let's hop right into it. Here we have a tweet from a senator applying pressure on Gary Gensler. And we saw last week with the Forbes article a lot of people are calling for Gary Gensler to stand down or resign because the moves he makes are not in favor of the investors. As the head of the SEC, your job is to take care of investors. And it doesn't look like that's been happening. And it's good to see these people in power, congressmen, people in the actual government who can make these decisions and make these changes, applying pressure to Gary Gensler. Um, a billion Ripple tokens unlocked by the escrow recently and then a huge 400 million XRP movement, okay? There's a lawsuit going on right now. You can't in the USA buy XRP in a lot of networks, but what does this show? People are still using and transacting on the ledger, and that's a bullish thing to see. I'm just gonna move really fast through these. Um, Ripple to accelerate Web3 development in Japan with a new partnership, okay? Um, the project will be focused on educating Japanese businesses about Web3 related use cases. Ripple has long been a fixture in the Japanese market. We know Southeast Asia is one of the largest Ripple markets. Last year, Ripple partnered with SBI Remit, the largest money transfer provider in the country, to improve cross-border payments. And now they're partnering with another big company in Japan. Emi Yoshikawa, Vice President of Strategy and Operations at Ripple, described the recent partnership as a testament to the XRP ledger's robustness. Speaking of the robustness of the XRP ledger, check out this hiring position. Um, Ripple does not want to see digital asset XRP used only for remittances. It wants XRP to use, be used in a more robust sense across different industries. In this job positioning, they're looking for someone to accelerate the adoption of the digital asset XRP and the XRP ledger in blockchain projects across industries and technologies. Now, even though there's a lot of FUD surrounding XRP, constantly they're hiring new positions. And when you get such a big company with so many smart people, all these developers, something's gonna happen from it. And you look at all the meetings Ripple has been having over the past decade with high ranking players, whether it's central banks, whether it's um, private banks, very large ones. Ripple has a track record of doing this. And a lot of people say, yeah, they have all these meetings and partnerships, but the coin is a dead coin. I always say it takes time to innovate big businesses, right? Smaller businesses can be more agile. They can do things quicker. You look at central banking and the banking system in general, it's one of the largest industries in history, all right? Change does not happen overnight here but you wanna bet on things, and I can't tell you what to do with your money, but when I look at cryptocurrencies, I look at things that have a technology that's truly innovative, and when you look at how XRP can send money seamlessly, trustfully, in three seconds, compare that to something like Swift, there is no better competitive advantage. Um, XRP Ledger might have a new state of stable coin, all right, USDS. According to the official announcement shared by blockchain company Stably, it has inked a partnership with US-based digital payment giant Ripple. They say, Stably is excited to partner with Ripple for technical support to launch our stable coin as USDS on the XRP ledger, the 10-year-old blockchain designed to enable settlement and liquidity of tokenized assets on scale, okay? So stable coins are a big thing in the blockchain space some of the highest market cap cryptocurrencies. And um, you wouldn't be able to have a successful blockchain ledger with no stable coins. So it's good to see that we're having USDS, the first stable coin on Ripple. Uh, the founder said, 
We are very excited to partner with Ripple and support our fiat to stablecoin gateway to XRPL via USDS. Regulatory compliance, transparency, and security have always been Stably's top priorities, and we look forward to bringing more of these to the XRPL community. So a fiat to stablecoin gateway is huge because it makes a simple way for people not in crypto to take their fiat dollars, their worthless fake money, and get it onto the cryptocurrency market, right? This is what we call a fiat on-ramp, and I'm not sure how many of the XRP ledger, how many fiat on-ramps were on there, but the more fiat on-ramps, the more gateways for fiat dollars, which is the whole economy, to get on to the blockchain, that is XRP's ledger. Um, and that's stably. Uh, moving forward, um, check this out. The digital dollar launched the technical sandbox program to explore the implications of CBDCs, right? We see countless news stories about Ripple and CBDCs, whether they're meeting with big central banks to discuss how to launch CBDCs. Now there is a technical sandbox program to explore the implications of CBDCs. If you guys look at the board of directors of the Digital Dollar Pro Project, we have former CFTC chairman, okay, Chris Giancarlo. And I wanna play you a video, Chris Giancarlo, former head regulator, talking about XRP and Ethereum and why one of them might not be a security, okay? Here's a Forbes article from the past where he declares it's not a, XR, XRP is not a security in his bombshell paper, titled Cryptocurrencies and the U.S. Laws Beyond Bitcoin and Ether. He co-authored this with a law firm. They methodically review the criteria of the Howey test. I'm sure you all know what the Howey test. It's what's, what's used to determine what is a security, what is not. And um, they basically determined in a point-by-point -point argument, XRP does not qualify. Rather, the paper argues, like its name would indicate, cryptocurrency is a currency of perhaps more interest to the Federal Reserve and central banks than securities regulators. And you think about all the partnerships that Ripple comes out with, XRP's token price is not affected, right? If XRP's profits were derived from the work of others, which is a security, that would mean when Ripple makes these partnerships, when Ripple's doing this stuff, it should influence the price of XRP and it doesn't, which to XRP holders can kind of be a letdown sometimes. But I think that's good in a legal argument to argue this is a currency, not a security. Look at all these partnerships. Look how the price does not change, right? And now here is the video from Fox News. Charlie, good to see you. Good to see you, Chris. Um, you know, you had uh, Chairman Gensler on just, I think. Really quickly, guys, I hope you have a good weekend. If you want to support the channel, just hit the like button. It takes one second. Really supports the videos, and I genuinely appreciate it. Thank you in advance. A few days ago, and he made it very clear he wasn't going to comment on an ongoing uh, enforcement matter. You know, the same applies uh, to former chairman as much as it does to current chairman. What I would say is before the SEC uh, launched its enforcement action against XRP and Ripple, I penned an op-ed along with my colleagues from Wilkie Farr and Gallagher in an international uh, law review uh, applying the same approach we would have taken when I was at the CFTC to analyze XRP under the so-called Howey test. And we came to the conclusion in that uh, 2020 article that it wasn't a security. And I stand behind that article today. But as for commenting on that specific action, um, once it's in front of the court, it's not for me as a former chair to uh, handicap how the judge may rule in this case. Well, Chris, um, this case, the ether is not before the court right now. At least it's before the court of public opinion and whether it is a security. But let's let's unpack this a little bit. Gary Gensler has consistently sidestepped the question if XRP is a security, because remember, they did some of the similar things they did on Ether, which is sell the token to help build out their platform, thus making it an investment in the SEC's view, obviously not your view, then why isn't Ether a security? Because they did an ICO. Great point here. Ripple is being attacked because they sold their tokens early on in an ICO format to fund the project. Ethereum, which they've said is not a security, did the same thing, right? You could have bought Ether for 15 cents in the ICO. Kind of crazy to think about <clears throat> Ether doing a 16,000x in six years. But Ether had the same rollout as XRP 
What's the difference? Let's see what Chris Giancarlo says. To help out build the, to help at some point build the Ethereum blockchain. So I guess my question to you, Chris, is if the SEC wins this case, does, does Gensler have to go back in time and basically consider Ether a security and, and ding the Ethereum people? Well, it's it's the right question to ask, Charlie. And, and in my book, uh, I talk about our analysis and our work with the SEC back in 2019 when I was chair of the CFTC and Jay Clayton was at the SEC and our work looking at Ethereum. And, I, you know, it was the Ethereum precedent that we looked at in 2020 after I left the commission uh, mm -hmm. in, in coming to the conclusion that XRP is not a security. Right. So. Uh, the analogy is certainly there. The precedent is there. And I think um, depending on how this case comes out, it's going to it, it could be very challenging for the way Ethereum is concerned. So in legal precedents, when you have history of certain rulings that goes forward in future rulings to look at these precedents. So if XRP does lose, if Ripple loses this case, Ethereum is going to be in trouble. But on the flip side, there is that precedent with Ethereum not being a security. So that could be a big argument going forward. It's not just a case about XRP. This Ripple lawsuit, for the USA's concern at least, is about all cryptocurrencies. Okay, so whether you like XRP or you don't, you should still care about the outcome of this lawsuit. Warren Buffett backs Ripple Net's new bank while the SEC case is dragging on. Right, I showed you the job postings earlier. I showed you XRP Ripple's new partnership with a Japanese company. They have a stable coin company. They're doing all these things. And now you have Warren Buffett, one of the top investors of all time. His Berkshire Hathaway invested 500 million in Brazilian digital bank, New Bank, which is a member of Ripple Net, okay? This is all happening amidst the lawsuit, okay? When we have bullish things like this, smart money like Warren Buffett, I think that's really a testament to the strength of the technology and what Ripple's doing. So two more videos, you're gonna to wanna to see this Raul Paul one, but first off, listen to what this lawyer has to say about the outcome of the XRP lawsuit. Uh, what you got going on and how you're trying to help the people against uh, some of these large government entities here. Sure, well, uh, I got uh, some recognition uh, about in April of this year when I filed a lawsuit against James, uh, Jay Clayton and Bill Henman personally for going outside the scope of what they were supposed to be doing at the SEC and you know, screwing over the XRP network users. That case is withdrawn. It is um, ready to go, though. So if anybody's interested in that, you go to XRPLawsuits.com, XRPLawsuits.com, and you can sign up if you're interested. Uh, it's a pinned tweet under my Twitter handle, at Freddie Riz with a Y. And uh, what I kind of wanted to give everybody an update on, a couple things with the XRP lawsuit and then a couple really interesting things. The uh, current status of the whole Ripple SEC thing, you know, not too much has been happening, at least that we know about. A lot of it's happening behind uh, sealing, sealed motions. And the overall good news, bad news, you know, that I want to, a good news sandwich that I want to give everybody is, Ripple is going to win this case. I've gone through all the discovery. I've done a deep dive, you know, on the merits, Ripple is gonna win. Right, so he's saying he's done a deep dive. This is just one lawyer, of course, but he's not, he's very not partisan. He's not on either side. And he's looked at the details. And I mean, obviously, if you're watching this video, you probably would agree with him, but it's good to see other legal professionals agreeing with this. And now for Raul Paul, super successful investor. Here he talks about why the asset market might have bottomed, and he makes a lot of sense. He's signaling a full recession, and we'll get to the tipping point where bond yields start to fall. It'll start affecting asset markets. So I'm not a believer we go to new lows. I've done surveys after survey and seen all the surveys on Twitter. 70% of all respondents in crypto and macro think equities go to new lows. 70% of all respondents think equities and crypto are going to new lows, right? That sounds like a bad thing. Am I wrong? Here's why it's not. Now, if that is the case, then most people are positioned for it. So therefore, the path of pain is the opposite. Right. When everyone's calling for a bear market, that could be the next bull run. When everyone's calling for a bull run, that could be the next bear market. 
Smart money is positioned ahead of these moves. That's how these billion dollar market makers work. And when everyone's calling for new lows, that means it's already priced in. And I think the market's priced that in. So I think there's no certainties in this world. I can be wrong. But my view, the balance of probabilities are for me that the, the uh, risk asset markets, equities, crypto have bottomed. We are having a retest. And as the economic data shifts and bond yields come down, that'll drive that further. And it'll be a further hated rally because nobody will understand. We're going into a recession. Why are equities going up? Well, because they already priced the recession. It's their job to be forward looking indicators. Smart money is always ahead of the game. And when everyone normal is calling for a recession, people with a lot of money have already positioned for this and we could see the next leg up. If you guys are new, subscribe, hit the bell to get notified whenever I drop a video. Press the like as always. I hope you have a great weekend. And if you're still watching the video by watching to the end, it really supports the channel. It helps the video do better. So let me know by commenting economics below so I know you're one of the best supporters. And I genuinely thank you for supporting and watching my videos. God bless you guys. Take care of yourselves. Take care of your families. Have a great weekend. Until next time.